Welcome to the video guys, I'm Rooster and this is your Gaming News Roundup. It's been quite a while since the last entry into the Street Fighter franchise, with Street Fighter V releasing way back in February 2016, but the wait for the next entry is slowly approaching, as Capcom has announced Street Fighter VI with a somewhat strange announcement video of Ryu flexing very large muscles, and well, flexing his toes in a close-up shot as Ryo is preparing to fight Luke, a DLC character brought in in Street Fighter V. But if you are hoping for lots of information, then I have some bad news. Capcom states that more Street Fighter VI news will be coming in summer of 2022, so this brief trailer will have to do you for now. In a rather shocking turn of events, in my opinion, the GOG team has announced that they will not be supporting Steam Deck, and actually mentioned installing Windows on the device instead in order to be able to play your GOG games, which, although is possible, is not really recommended, and not something that the vast majority of Steam Deck users will want to do. Fear not though, as the Lutris team has your back and fires back at GOG, stating that installing Windows is not required and if GOG does not decide to support Linux and doesn't have faith in, in Linux, then others will support it for them as they do have faith in Linux. For those who don't know what Lutris is, in short, it is a game library management software for Linux that with community scripts can support installing games that require things like Wine, which allows you to play Windows-based games on Linux. So yeah, shocking statement from GOG, but well done Lutris. Bethesda has now officially announced that it will be closing down the PC storefront Bethesda.net later this year. In a blog post linked down in the description for those who want to read it, it even has a handy little FAQ about the shutdown, so anything you need to know will be down there. The FAQ helps to clear up some of the main questions you may have by explaining how you will not lose access to your games and will instead need to take the steps they have provided to transfer the ownership of your games to Steam. This includes any in-game currencies like Atoms as well. The ever so long anticipated Elden Ring has finally released this week to critical acclaim, seeing 10 out of 10s across the board and half a million players on Steam alone on its first day. The game is not released without its own minor issues though. Console players have noted that the game does not always maintain its 60fps, and PlayStation fans have noticed that shutting off the PlayStation 5 before closing the game can lose your save data, so if you're playing the game on PS5, try to avoid leaving your game running while you put your console into rest mode. As for PC players, there have been some issues with heavy stuttering regardless of hardware, so let's hope these small kinks can be ironed out as soon as possible, as they're a mark on an otherwise remarkable game. And finally, I'd like to draw your attention to something a bit more serious today. As you probably already know, Ukraine is currently under attack from Russia as Russia attempts to invade. Here we have a statement put out by GSC Game World, developers behind Stalker 2, and that statement goes as follows. As of today, the Russian Federation has officially declared war on Ukraine. Our country woke up with the sounds of explosions and weapon fire, but is ready to defend its freedom and independence, for it remains strong and ready for anything. The future is unknown, but we hope for the best, are ever sure of our armed forces and our belief in Ukraine. We thus address all of our colleagues in the gaming industry, players, bloggers, or anyone who sees this post in their newsfeed. Share this, do not stand aside and help those in need. They have provided a special aid account, uh, which you can donate to from all over the globe. And it finally states, through pain, death, war, fear, and inhuman cruelty, Ukraine will persevere as it always does. Well, this is a harrowing time for those in Ukraine, and my heart truly goes out to them. We can only pray for their safety. And on that somber note today, I'd like to thank you for watching, and I hope to have happier news for you in the next one. So I'll catch you in the next one, guys.